scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There is someone who came for this conference. You may have started just with salvation, but the Spirit of God has taken you through transformation to a measure. And now you came for this conference because there is such an anointing. There is a mighty grace that is going to rest upon you and it will turn you to become a sign and a wonder. There are pastors that are transformed sincerely. The missing ingredient in your ministry is empowerment. Just because oil came on your head does not mean you are anointed. Oil does not anoint. The oil has to be anointed itself to anoint. God does not hide his power in oil or mediums. His power is hidden in his word. His power is hidden in men. It is men that anoint the mediums to be points of contact. Are we together? Let's celebrate this gentleman. God bless you, please. If we are together, say amen. amen. I want you, whilst you are seated, to lay your hands on your head and now begin to cry unto God in one minute before we continue. Father, I desire, you know what face you are in right now. For some, you are not even saved. I'll be giving you an opportunity before the service is done. For some you are saved, but the truth is that there is there is bankruptcy of grace of growth. You have been around the things of church, but not around the things of God. There is a cry for transformation. Go ahead and pray. And there are others in all fairness. You have tasted of the transforming power of the spirit, but your witness is not effective because you need to be empowered. You need to be empowered. You have tarried in this conference because the anointing for your destiny has been looking for you. Oh, and may it find you tonight. May it find you tonight. May it find you. That anointing that makes you a prophet indeed. That anointing that makes you an apostle indeed. That anointing that makes you a businessman indeed. May it find you. May it find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now. Yesterday I understand Dr. Ogwele began to talk to you about the knowledge of God and he shared a few things and I just want to add a few things and then we'll pray. It is important to know, listen carefully, I wrote here, the riches and the full potential of the life of God is released only when we know God. The riches and the full potential of the life of God is only released when we know God. That means this Zoe life, when the believer receives this life, watch this now. The life of God is a compendium of limitless possibilities. But that the potentials in that life that you have received is only released to your world to the degree to which you know God. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. The B part says, but the people that do know their God. Two things will happen to them. Number one, capacity. They shall be strong. 
Number two, they shall do exploits. Not talk exploits, not wish exploits, not explain exploits, not just write books about exploits. They shall do exploits. Hallelujah. John 17 and verse 3. Jesus is praying now and he says, And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God. Are you seeing that now? That the administration of eternal life is beyond just confessing Jesus Christ. That opens you up to the potential of that life. But the experience of eternal life is a product of knowledge. That the deeper your knowledge of God, the more the reality of this life you have received is made manifest through you. You believe that? Say amen. This is life eternal. That they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. In fact, the Bible says, according as his divine power, it says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge, not of it, the knowledge of him. So grace and peace is multiplied to the degree to which you know him. You know him. The more you know him, the more you see grace, the more you see peace. The more you know him, the more you see grace. That means the difference between any two believers is not the love of God. It's the depth of their knowledge of God that has translated to the power that they command in their world. Did you get that now? Someone can tell the sick, be healed. You can speak over someone's destiny. Let doors be open. And you find out that nothing happens. It's not that you are fake. It's just that you do not know God enough to have drawn the kind of strength required to produce that. Are we together? There is a reward for every encounter with God. It's like money. If I have 10,000, can I buy a house? No. But do I have money? Yes. But not enough for that kind of possibility. So if I stand to buy a house and I bring out 10,000, the owner of the house or whoever is selling it will say, this is too small. There are many of us, it's not like you are not anointed. But the capacity of God you need to make you reveal him to your world, you don't have it yet. So you stand before cases that are higher than your knowledge of God. And you say in the name of Jesus, let your destiny be open. And destiny is not open. Because every time you know God, there is a weight you carry in the spirit. And the realm of the spirit acknowledges it. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. This is what differentiates men in the spirit. The depth of their knowledge of God. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, he says. Is someone learning now? This is the difference between any two preachers, believe me. This is the difference between any two kingdom businessmen. The depth of their knowledge of God. There is someone who can find something about God. The patriarchs find, found something about God. And it brought them, they were not even praying for power. When Moses, watch this, when Moses had an encounter with the glory of God, he never prayed that his face would shine. He never prayed for certain levels of wisdom. It was a byproduct. It is impossible to meet and know the God of the Bible and then remain the same. The people that do know their God, the preachers that do know their God, the apostles that do know their God. Are we together? The realm of the spirit has a very clear, unambiguous understanding of everyone's level of the knowledge of God because you see the Bible tells us God is many things like you'll be learning shortly I hope we're working together it says God is light that means every time you encounter God how they know in the spirit is that your illumination increases when Jesus transfigured he showed us his spirit man the brightness of light so every time I encounter God you grow in the spirit not just by measuring chronological age your growth in the spirit is measured by the depth of light that is emitted from your spirit man which is a product of the depth of your encounter with god this is even how you can know the ranking of angels by the lights that they emit which is a product of how many times they have the privilege of encountering god themselves 
is someone learning so when I encounter God as a man of God there is a level of light weight and stature that I command in the spirit that translates to the level of empowerment that rests upon my life let's talk a bit about knowing God this is where I'll wrap up for tonight are you learning <laughs> now the truth is that according to Isaiah 40 and verse 28 the Bible lets us know that God is limited and God is infinite when we talk about the subject of knowing God he said has thou not known has thou not heard the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth watch this he fainted not neither is he weary then he says there is no searching of his understanding you know what that means in our quest to know God even through eternity we will never exhaust him so he's already given you an information from the start that as you seek to know God prepare to make it an eternal journey there is no arrival that you will never get to a point where you can quantize all of God and say this is God that was a mistake of Lucifer he thought that all of God that he saw was all that there was to God. And he said, if this is all that God has, then I can be God. I can exalt myself like the most high. Only for him to find out that there are many dimensions in God that he did not know. Are we together now? The songwriter says, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. How true. When you encounter God, you will see that there are many layers to God now. So have this at the back of your mind. The second thing I want you to know, which is very important, is one of the major reasons why God is unfathomable is because of three attributes of God that he did not share with man. When the Bible calls us partakers of his divine nature, it is not every part of his divine nature we got. There are aspects of his divine nature that he did not share with man. Number one, his omnipresence. He did not share it with man man does not have omnipresence number two his omnipotence the ability to be all powerful man is not all powerful we are not almighty our power is derived from our union with him outside of our union with him we do not have power are we together and then man is omnipresent not omnipresent not omnipotent not omniscient all-knowing paul already educated us that we see in part and we prophesy in part that means the best of us is still limited in understanding it is because of these three attributes these are the attributes that brands God in a class all by himself this one he did not share with man omnipresence omnipotence and omniscience is someone learning now so as we explore God we are limited because we are not omnipresent, we are not omnipotent, we are not omniscient. But then the Lord gives us an opportunity to be able to discover layers, layers of the knowledge of him. So as far as our work on earth is concerned, there are three dimensions to knowing God. And this is what I want to give you tonight. I believe that this is one of the things that Dr. David Ogwele was attempting to bring yesterday, if you understand these three dimensions, you will know God rich enough to be a sign and a wonder on earth. Not rich enough to exhaust your passion for God, but rich enough to be a believer with the command of power and stature indeed. Are we together? I receive... I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up. You are exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorify I receive I manifest 
your power and your wisdom to my nation see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up this song for someone will be your testimony it will become the anthem of your life that when men see you they will truly see the manifestation of the glory of God they will marvel and say can God make this kind of a man can God make this kind of a pastor can God make this kind of a prophet from what breed have you come these are men who have been forged out of the furnace of affliction men of power and men of might that men will look at you and you look like you are God upon the earth you will tame life like an animal because you have sustained power in the spirit he said leave me for the day breaketh and he said I will not let you go I will not let you go unless you bless me and say what is your name he said I am Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed he touched the whole of his thigh and blessed him the Bible says the sun arose and he called the place Peniel for I have seen God face to face there are people who will rise from this conference tonight this night you are seated but you don't know what is already happening in your spirit man my goodness Parakatos there are prophets that will rise. There are Deborahs that will rise. There are Catherine Kuhlmans that will rise. It is time to not just talk about history. That your altars in Asaba will be burning fire, flames of fire, flames of fire. You go to church on Sunday and no devil can stand. It's not just by acting and playing games. You have become custodians of the things of the spirit. God can trust you with the destinies of men. You have access authority in the spirit. Receive, manifest his power, his wisdom receive manifest his power his wisdom listen can i tell you many people talk about wealth and prosperity and this is one of the things that has distracted people from loving jesus you have not experienced prosperity yet until you walk this path with the spirit you will lay up gold as dust and it will be as if you went to meet a herbalist you believe me most of the people who move around is because they do not know God when God walks with you when he is done with you look at what he did with Solomon sit down let me give you this we have to wrap up I want you to write like your destiny depends on it is it possible to know God yes God again in the quest to make us know him because knowing him is connected to our accessing power is connected to our faith working is connected to our doing exploits in our world there are three dimensions to knowing god and this will wrap up my teaching tonight are you ready the first dimension in your quest to know god is that you must understand and know his nature and his character this is the first dimension whilst God is infinite there is no searching of the vastness of his person he has fragmented himself into three principal dimensions for our learning that every believer in this side of God's kingdom who desires to know God he's taking away the vagueness you can methodically he says let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me man can know God the first dimension to the knowledge of God is the knowledge of his nature 
and his character. Please write. The Bible is filled with experiences where God revealed his character. In Exodus chapter 33, 18 and 19. We have to be fast about this. Exodus 33, 18 and 19. Hallelujah. It was Moses who prayed a very sincere prayer. In the previous chapters before 18, he said, show me your way. Then when we get to verse 18, he says, I beseech thee, show me your glory. How did God answer that prayer? Verse 19. He says, I will make my goodness. Everybody say goodness. The goodness of God is an aspect of his glory. Do you know that this was the formula that was given to the nation of Israel? That every time their enemies came and it was sure that defeat was imminent, there was a chant that they made in the spirit. You are good and your mercy endures forever. They invoked his goodness and his mercy. And it's like two ingredients that when it lands upon the earth, victory must come even to the undeserving. The goodness of God. In Isaiah chapter 40, 28 to 30, Isaiah 40, 28 to 30, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard the everlasting God? Watch this now. The creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not. This is, is giving you an understanding of the character of God. He is not weary. These things that are common with men do not happen with God. There is no such of his understanding. 29. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increased strength. 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. 31. Let's try 30, the next verse. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Are you seeing now? God gives strength to people who are weary because he himself does not get weary. These are the things you need to know about God. The nature of God. The attributes of God. I think one of the most concise descriptions of God's nature was as revealed by the psalmist. When you read the entire text of Psalm 103, it is a profound revelation. The most concise capture of the various attributes of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Verse 2. Let's run. And forget not his benefits. And he lists six of those benefits. Number one, verse three, who forgiveth your iniquity, who healeth all your diseases, verse four, who redeemeth your life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Then when you read verse three, it says the Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. So you can learn God by his character. You can learn God by the attributes, the things that he's doing. He made known his ways to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. Uh -huh. The Lord is merciful. Say merciful. The Lord is gracious. Say gracious. The Lord is slow to anger. So if you come and meet me and say, Apostle, God is mad at you. And he says you will die tomorrow. I respect your prophecy, but then my understanding of the character of God, that God is slow to anger. There is enough time for me and God to do a discussion. There is enough time for me to repent, provided I am alive. The understanding of the nature of God takes away fear. I judge prophecy by the knowledge of the nature of God. Is someone learning now? This is what gives you stability and maturity in the spirit. If you do not know God, men who act in his stead can mislead you. When the prophet came and met Hezekiah, he said, Hezekiah, I brought you a word from the Lord. Put your house together, you will not recover from this sickness. He said, I respect you. I know you are a great prophet, but leave me and God. There is something I know about him. He turned his face and said, God, remember, I know that you are a merciful God. And you tied your mercy to time so that every morning it is renewed like time. Where did you keep the mercy? And God said, suddenly. Oh, th that was what blind Bartimio knew. He said, thou son of David. If it is true, you are the son of David. If it is true, you are God. Then mercy is connected to you. Have mercy on me. Is someone learning now? When you know God, fear leaves. Truly it does. The character of God. 
God is not just a judgmental God waiting to destroy everybody. The Bible says he knows our frame. He understands that we are weak. There is a healthy system of accommodation for our weakness in the economy of God with men. He knows. That's why the psalmist can go back to God and say, in sin and iniquity did my mother conceive me. Creating me a clean heart, he says, and renew a right spirit from within me. Do you know God that much? Do you know God that much? It is inconsistent with God's ways to judge you for the mistakes of others. The mistakes of your father and your father's father. You see that? There is a law that transgenerational iniquity can have an effect on people. But you see, when Jesus came, he revealed that that is not God's best. It is based on that knowledge you can cast that thing and say, whatever happened with my father, I don't have to be a victim. There is something about the nature of God that can bring me out of that. Who seen that this man was born? Was it him or his father? Jesus said, neither. But this has happened that the glory of God would be revealed. When you say you're a matured Christian, it's not just because of the time you have spent in church. These are the things that frame your spiritual stamina. You see that? So when you say, Apostle, God does not like you, you become a prayer request for me. I pray for you that God will bring you to a higher level of understanding. If God says he's going to bless 100 people here, I begin to pray for the remaining 99. Because one position is taken already. It says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting love. And with my loving, except you are not a Christian. You have to believe this. The world will bully you out of your confidence if you do not know God. We live in a world today where based on where you come from, who your father is or is not, the social media has their own system of pulling you out of your confidence. Complex will destroy you as a man of God. You will travel across the globe and people will look at you and they will, they will, they will call you by all kinds of names. But not when you know him. Not when you know him. The greatest status any man can have on earth is to be the son of God. It is a very superior status. I may never have a chance to be called barrister. I may never have a chance to be called president of a nation. I may never have a chance to be called the ambassador of a nation. I may not have any chance to be called his royal highness. But there is a status that is greater and higher than any sons of God. It says, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But the greatest revelation of the nature of God is found in 1 John 4, 7 to 12. Let's read together. Beloved, it says, let us love one another for the love, for love is of God. Watch this. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And does what? So the ultimate measure of your knowledge of God is your love life, not enlightenment. The zenith of your transformation is the health of your love life not the level of your spiritual illumination there are many people who have access to mysteries but their love life is dead verse 8 he that loveth not knoweth not God read it he that loveth not knoweth not God why for God is love it's as simple as that so you love God but you hate the brethren something is wrong with that orientation the bible says that the knowledge of god at its zenith connects you to his love that means the more i know god the more i grow in the things of god the more i find myself loving him and loving his creation there are men of god who only use their members they do not love them there are politicians who only use their people they do not love them do not tell me you know god I will test your love life there are people who wish the downfall of others wish the destruction of churches 
wish the destruction of other people within the body no if you love jesus christ it is not in the greek and the hebrew and the rema and whatever the bible says he that does not love god does not know god your love life must be affected this is true how do i know you are growing in the spirit i don't just look at his power the highest index for measuring love greater than every other thing the bible begins to describe the qualities of love in first corinthians 13 and it talks about all of those things love is patient love is kind love is humble are you seeing now so when the bible lists the nine gifts of the spirit is actually one manifestation love expressed in those dimensions because he gives us perspective in first corinthians 13 he says love is kind so when he says the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace no he's saying from love comes all these expressions more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life i want you to live with this revelation god is love that means the more of god i am becoming the more of love this is why i love my name do you know that's the meaning of my name selman means the way to love what a good name what a good name how do you carry such a name and hate people no I love Jesus with all my heart and believe me I love his people with all my heart that is why I would not manipulate them that is why I would not use them for gain I love them too much I would not come and lie and deceive them and play games with them instead of telling people stop stealing stop doing all of these things just bring people to the revelation of the love of God and there are things that when the love of God is at work in you it becomes evil to do to men are we together yes so i will not come and manipulate you and just prophesy and say bring out all your money and give me there's nothing wrong in giving don't get me wrong but from a standpoint of manipulation you do not love god i don't care what tongues you are speaking you do not love god hallelujah in all your prayer you must pray that the love of god in a higher dimension be shared abroad your heart by the holy ghost because when you love the Lord, do you know, I can stay all night. If this were all night, I would have taught you something about the nature of love. There are certain realms that only lovers get to. Even prayer warriors cannot get there. Even fasting giants cannot get there. If you actually touch that realm in the spirit, it's a love affair. The Bible says, no eye has seen. Is that in your Bible? No ear has heard. Neither has it come into the heart of man what God has in store, not for everybody, for them that love him. There is a level that you love the Lord to a point where you earn another status in the spirit called the friend of God. Not everyone is a friend of God. And when you attain that status in the spirit, part of the privileges that you enjoy is God will never do anything in a territory, in a dispensation and not tell you, shall I hide this? from my friend Abraham are we learning the nature and the character of God the result of this is confidence and freedom from fear not freedom to live carelessly not freedom to be licentious but freedom that he loves me and I'm aware that he loves me I'm aware that God loves me my goodness if you are looking for a man who is loved by God jealously loved this is one man standing before you I don't know about you but I know he loves me listen in marriage the confidence of every bride among other factors is principally derived from the awareness of the love of her husband towards her women am i right on that yes that when a woman is aware that her husband loves her so jealously 
there is a level of whether she's good enough or not whether she speaks well enough or not whether she's educated or not the greatest person whose love matters to her in the earth is her husband so if you as the bride of christ when you come into that knowledge of the depth of the love of that your husband because everybody is a bride in the spirit male or female you are called the bride of christ and the bible says jealousy is the rage of a man you want to see how powerful a man is touch the wife he loves not the wife he married the wife he loves so it is this awareness of god's love that gives me the confidence to know that yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death for me it's not a bible recitation it's been motivated by an awareness of god's love for me i shall fear no evil for thou art with me it says your rod and your staff they comfort me there are times that as i travel around the world god granted me that grace sometimes truly speaking people can send me text messages and say apostle please i just had a vision i saw you in a ghastly motor accident i saw something happening to you sometimes people reach me and say apostle i want you to pray i just saw that your name was taken to a shrine and these are these are genuine people they are not just people talking nonsense these are people who have a track record with god i know they are not lying but every time i want to fear love does not give me a chance to fear the confidence that i have is it not in your bible that he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm the consciousness of his character his nature it's been so engraved in my heart it says all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost when you give jesus anything including your life he's a keeper he keeps faithfully but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed he only keeps that which is committed i've handed over my life to him already i don't intend to take it back what then is the basis of my fear in fact for me to live is christ and even if i die it is still gain i have cheated life already from both ends when i pray for longevity is not out of fear my eternity is secured already it's only that i need time because of the program of god as an expression of my love for him for giving his all when i pray for longevity is not from a standpoint of fear i have been secured in his love already the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the koinonia, the sharing together, the participation, the fellowship of the Spirit. Paul said, let it remain with you. Let the consciousness of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, let the consciousness of the love of God, and the sharing, the participation, you have come into oneness with the Spirit. He says, let it dwell with you. Can I give you number two? What time do I have? We have to wrap up so that we'll come back. Hallelujah. I think I should just stop here. I will give you the remaining two. You are not afraid of going home late again. What suddenly happened to you? Take it down. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever follow you. I have sought you in the morning and I have learned to walk in your ways step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days step by step he'll lead you 
and you will follow him all of your days listen he can lead you out of these generational causes he can lead you out of the things that kept your father down you watch your father sincere but he went down your mother went down you watch preachers around your community go down if you can follow this good shepherd he can lead you he can lead you believe me step by step he leads me and I will follow you all of my days I refuse to be confused about life and destiny the one I gave my life to is a good shepherd he does not abandon his sheep even if it is in the night the Bible says while shepherds watch their flocks even by night he does not just take care of you in the day when times are good even by night when you are confused the good shepherd is still there watching his flock by night preacher hear me there is a way out of this ministerial calamity there is a way out of this financial crisis businessman hear me you are in debt but there is something about God you need to know going around just to keep collecting loan will compound your problems believe me there is a way out there is a way out Jesus said I am the way I am the door the door is the authorized access to any realm the door is the authorized access to any dimension to the dimension of wealth he is the door dimension of ministerial exploit he is the door oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever love you I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. Step by step, you lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. Listen, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden. He says, I will give you rest. That is his nature he gives men rest you cannot come to him and he leaves your life in trouble even if your boat is as boisterous when he comes he brings shalom peace come to your life i will be still and know you are god my soul be still and know you are god I will be still and know you are God. My soul be still and know you are God. I just sang my life for you. When I found the nature of God, it gave me rest. God is mighty. If he speaks, it is final. It is not just final because he is God. It is final because he is the only God. Hallelujah. I was teaching last week in Port Harcourt, I think it was. And one of the things I taught the people is that God does not have authority. God only gives authority. God cannot have authority. Because the nature of authority is that someone higher than you must give you. And there is no one higher than him. He has all power, but not authority. If God has authority, there are three things that happen the moment authority comes to you. One, you must acknowledge an authority higher than you, a person higher than you. Two, there is jurisdiction. Because with authority comes limitation. So when you say God has authority, then you need to tell us the jurisdiction of his power and who owns the rest. Are we together? Jesus only had authority when he became a man and submitted to God. But as God, he has all power and no authority. It is men that have both power and authority because authority is the legitimacy to use power. If you have power alone, your use of it is illegal. You must have authority to be allowed to use power. 
So if an armed robber has gun, he has power, but no authority. If a military man holds a gun, he has power and authority. That's why he does not go to jail for shooting. Demons have power, but they do not have authority. Only the believer was given both power and authority. <laughs> Hallelujah. So every time you stand to question Satan, don't question power, question authority. <clears throat> question authority. Question authority. I have to stop here tomorrow we'll take the two other attributes of God and then we'll connect it to your theme because you see you cannot desire that doors be open if you do not even know the one who holds the key of David there is a mystery called the key of David that is the key that opens a door that men cannot shut he says I am he that was dead and now he's alive and I hold the keys you know what that keys are that when he opens a door there are doors that when men open men can shut but when the holder of the key of David opens that door he says no man can shut it when he opened the prison door no man could shut it hallelujah yes there are doors that men open and men can choose to shut it but there are doors that when he opens it remains rise up on your feet we are going to pray I want to encourage you do not miss any part of the sessions that are left because this is a build up of a thorough spiritual understanding it will cause you to be a person of stature we have examined the apostolic model for growth for stature in the spirit to have power with God and I've revealed to you through that just one of the dimensions to knowing God his character and his nature I want you to turn it into prayer before I speak over your life and say father take away fear from my life take away uncertainty from my life reveal yourself to me reveal your character afresh to me go ahead and pray someone is praying Someone is praying. Go ahead and pray. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe upon my life. Will you breathe, Lord? Breathe. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe upon my life. You are praying now. Breathe, Lord. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power. And your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. So breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. The result of knowing God's nature and character is confidence and security confidence 
when you stand before the sick when you stand as a prophet and say things that have not happened and your life is at stake it is because you know who sent you if you do not know him don't stand before pharaoh you will make a fool of yourself moses said who shall i tell him has sent me and he said i am that i am we stand bold before the nations to declare his counsel we stand before the powers of darkness and we announce the exodus of god's people upon the understanding of his nature it is not because we are extraordinary in ourselves but we have found his integrity embedded in his character that God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent that he is all powerful and he is full of love and by this understanding everything that has kept you in fear hear me everything that has kept you limited everything that has refused to allow the God life the reality of the life and the power of the Christ to be made manifest in your life I command it to give way now in the name of Jesus Christ there are many of us listen these kinds of apostolic conferences should happen more frequently around the southeast do you know why because there will be men and women who can believe God to know that he has given them a mandate and the fear of money the fear of whether people will come dies when you know God none of you signed a paper to tell pastor Ike that you will come here it took his knowledge of God that built faith in him to be able to put this there are no guarantees in life your guarantee is God not men men are very emotional they vacillate they can promise you today and disappoint you tomorrow but those who trust in the Lord the Bible says they are like Mount Zion that can never be shaken but that it abided forever can I speak over your life father in the name of Jesus the grace that brings men into prophetic encounters I came to release that grace is one of the graces that I came to release upon someone because you need to have a very deep encounter with God there are two more dimensions and I will show you tomorrow but in the name of Jesus I pray for you from the depth of my heart let that anointing let that increase that draws men into the Holy of Holies into the secret place he said blessed is the man whom God causes to approach him like he did Moses he prohibited the nation of Israel but he asked Moses to come and now by the blood he's open to us that new and living way therefore I decree and declare have supernatural encounters of the God kind some of you you go to bed tonight you will have angelic visitations visitations of the spirit the blueprint of your destiny will be revealed to you and the haziness around your Christian experience help those under the anointing in the name of Jesus the haziness around your Christian experience I command it to vanish tonight for some of you it will be unto you as it was help this woman in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 it says in the year that King Uzziah died I Isaiah saw the Lord the grace to see may be released on you the grace to see let it be released upon you help them please let it be released upon you let it be released upon you that grace to see that grace to encounter God in the name of Jesus Christ One more prayer. I see a dark shadow, like a curtain, resting on people's lives. Tomorrow we'll have the time to pray and minister, but I need to do this since God revealed it to me. Just like a veil, but it is shadow, not a material veil. And it's cast on people. And because of this, your mind has been blinded to spiritual things. You are not able to understand. You open the Bible and yet you cannot see anything. Some of you are preachers and you've been crying and say, Lord, open the eyes of my understanding. I want to pray. 
the assignment of the spirit of revelation is that your understanding becomes fruitful i pray for you help that man in the name of jesus that veil that has sat upon your mind in the spirit not allowing you to comprehend spiritual things i tear off that veil now please help them please help them whether you're an usher or not i tear off that veil now in the name of jesus you hear me there are many of you who will start understanding things you did not study from tonight you will wake up and open the bible and see that illumination superior light from heaven because there is an urgency for the saints to become matured there is an urgency to attain stature in the spirit we cannot take the nations being weak in the spirit we need to be people of capacity and power therefore i pray for you all that it takes for your spirit man to be built may it rest upon you now may that engraving rest upon you now the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us the lord is asking me to pray one last prayer my apologies for stretching you but i must pray it watch this you love the lord with all your heart but the lord is showing me that there are people there are all kinds of things that have held you bound addictions habits you want to serve the lord acceptably but there are things tying you down and it has kept you in fear will i go to hell can i live a victorious life i want to minister to you in the name of jesus wherever you are everything that god gives man he gives man control and dominion over the moment he cannot control it that a spirit has come to manipulate you therefore i declare every influence that keeps you bound keeps your flesh bound i declare be released now be released now the spirit of slumber gluttony lusts of every kind addictions of aparaka toskiata be released from it now be released from it now in the name of jesus that you step into an authentic apostolic order of christian experience in the name of jesus christ amen so let me make the request this night please tomorrow um our teaching will also double as a miracle service i understand there's a morning session and a night session i'm sure pastor ike will come to speak on that but particularly for tomorrow night as i would usually do please i want you to invite everyone it's going to be a miracle service an impartation service there will be a release of graces as much as possible invite the servants of god to come god grants us this grace so that we can there can be a sharing in the spirit are we together it's not about who is bigger than who it is a privilege for us to be distributors of these possibilities businessmen invite them captains of industry and then may i request that you come with your requests and you can also take that of your loved ones who may not be here anywhere across the world you can write it down and come we're going to be praying over it here and to trust god for grace but there are some of you you have carried this presence tonight it will not leave you the work of the spirit in you till tomorrow some of you may not even be able to sleep this night you will wake up and pray in a way that you have never prayed because there is an inner working of the spirit may the lord bless you in jesus mighty name we pray hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you